Hello everyone, welcome to another interesting lecture on digital signal processing. In today's class, we are going to see the mathematical derivation for discrete Fourier transform. In lectures previous to this, we have seen how the TFT operates on a signal in animation as well as in the experimental form. So in today's class, we are going to talk about this discrete Fourier transform in terms of the mathematical proof. So in order to analyze uh, how the discrete Fourier transform or your DFT's formula comes from, we need to see uh, something called as your frequency sampling. So frequency sampling is something that happens in the frequency domain. So which means your x axis is frequency. That is what frequency sampling, uh, frequency analysis means. So when your x axis is a frequency, I am now doing frequency sampling means taking a continuous signal in the frequency domain, a continuous signal which is over the x-axis frequency and I'm taking the sample points on these continuous signal. Good. So these sample points are picked at equal intervals, at equal distance of 2 pi by n. So where my n is the number of points. So if I take 100 points over 2 pi, then I have 2 pi by n, right? 2 pi by 100, 100 points in the, in, because that width of the frequency um, axis, the width of my signal or the width of my sampling width, a uh, sampling bandwidth is fixed to be 2 pi. So the sampling bandwidth is always fixed to be 2 pi. It's, there is no question because we are talking in terms of uh, sinusoids, uh, cos and sine, and we all know that they exist in 0 to 2 pi interval. So your frequency sampling happens in the range of 0 to 2 pi, and n represents the number of points you have in that interval. So the width between these sample points is always 2 pi by n. So they are equi distant sample points. And now you can see what are the values of each point. So the values of each point is given by 2 pi by n x of 1, x of 2, x of etc. Where that x of 1, 2 that represents the k represents the index. So the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 represents the sampling position which are picked to be integer values. Good. Now if I project these sample points to the frequency axis, that is the dashed line you have seen. So those dashed lines can be represented using your shifted delta. The shift is represented by 2 pi by n into k. Good. So now if you know this much, so the what I have on your uh, right hand side is the graphical representation of frequency sampling. So if you know this much, now I can write the formula for my frequency sampling. So the formula for my frequency sampling is going to be pi by n x of k so you know where that is coming from and delta of omega minus 2 pi by n into k and you know where that delta is so you know how this equation came so the, the main reason why i have drawn this graph on this side is to show you where i get these things where i get that equation from okay. now once i have that equation what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply i'm going to do a common operation on both the sides both the right hand side and the left hand side i'm going to integrate it from 0 to 2 pi and then multiply it with e to the power of j omega n and 2 d omega. So this operation I'm doing on both sides. If you see, I've done it on the both sides. And uh, the main reason for doing this is to simplify the right hand side to get you to a formula of Fourier transform. Good. So now the, the assumption is the left hand side represents your, so this equation is both continuous and discrete at the same time. So if you see the left hand side, that is a continuous form uh, equation. And if you are on the right hand side, you have a discrete equivalent equation. So which means this equation one is both continuous and discrete. So now we are going to simplify this equation one to get our DFT. So today's class is about the DFT formulas and how they are derived and how the, the proof for the derivation of these DFTs and IDFT. IDFT standing for inverse discrete Fourier transform. Good. So this is the frequencies. So here today in this slide, I have shown you what is frequency sampling and then how we can express frequency sampling mathematically. That is a 2 pi by n x of k delta of omega minus 2 pi by n k. And I also shown you that this equation by doing an operation uh, because, because what you have on the left hand side, the continuous form representation is your continuous Fourier transform. It is a CFT formula. So if you have studied the uh, previous to this, um, it is a CFT formula. So let's uh, uh, let's uh, not worry about CFTs. We will only focus on DFTs, that is discrete Fourier transform for this class. So now 1 by 2 pi 0 to 2 pi x of omega e to the power of j omega and d omega, that was my left hand side. 
that is this is a continuous form representation and the right hand side is my discrete form representation and it is given in this manner so i'm going to slightly regroup it because i have a summation k to the base k and i have an integral to the base um, omega so i'm going to do what i'm going to do is i'm going to group this integral so i'm going to see what i can integrate out of this equation and I, what i can do summation on uh, from this equation one so by just taking a look and uh, knowing the um, principles behind the integral and summation i can easily tell that my integral 0 to 2 pi d omega can be applied to delta omega because that is having omega in it and also know that by delta formula uh, delta of omega minus 2 pi by n into k into e to the power of j omega n is nothing but e to the power of j 2 pi by n k because when you multiply a shifted delta with a signal it's going to take the value of that signal at that position so the position here is the position is 2 pi by n k and the signal is e to the power of j omega n so when i do this when i apply this delta property to this uh, derivation to this integral so the position is 2 pi by n k and my signal is e to the power of j omega n so i'm going to get only one value i'm going to get the value of that signal at this position that is 2 pi by n k so this um, should not look difficult if you know the delta property and if you are familiar with what delta signal does to uh, to any signal so if you know that then you know multiplying with that delta will make your signal singular because your signal may be continuous it may have a lot of values but if it encounters a delta signal if you multiply it with a delta signal then that signal uh, delta signal makes everything singular so your uh, continuous signal will turn into a value single valued signal and that is what i have shown here that is your e to the power of j 2 pi by n k n okay and now we know the range of my n is from 0 to n minus 1 integer value so we have seen k is equal to 0 1 2 3 so they are all integer values so we are not uh, at least for this uh, uh, we are not dealing with any uh, uh, rational or fractional uh, sample values all are considered to be integer values from 0 to n minus 1 so now i am uh, here i am just writing the continuous and the discrete equivalent so my continuous domain i can write it to be x of t because that is my cft formula and my discrete equivalent is x of n so in my frequency sampling what i am basically doing is i am taking my x of t and con converting it into x of n and that is why i have written it as x of t equal to x of n and now uh, what the simplified expression the simplified uh, expression that i have i can uh, i have just shown here that is x of n is equal to sigma k 1 by n x of k e to the power of j 2 pi by n k n and that is your inverse discrete formula okay so it is not the discrete fourier formula it is the inverse discrete fourier formula so we are starting with the inverse and then from inverse we get to the um, direct the discrete form okay so not to be confused so this is your inverse discrete fourier transform so here you have an interview question so the interview questions are <clears throat> why you have this how come you get this 1 by n in this formula good because that 1 by n is missing in dft so we will we'll, we'll see that maybe i'll have to tell the question after i explain the dft proof also uh, so that is one question which is very commonly asked in very tough interviews you know it's not a question for beginner level maybe in an advanced isro or you know some uh, service exams interviews they may ask so that is probably when you are already at the final stage of uh, your uh, uh, the recruitment process okay good so let's uh, see next how to derive your df okay so for derivation of my discrete fourier transform what i do is i apply the same operation I, i do the same procedure that is i take um, the summation i do something uh, on both sides on the left hand side and the right hand side so on the left hand side i put sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n e to the power of j 2 pi by n r of n and then i put uh, sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 1 by n x of k e to the power of j 2 pi by n k n n e to the power of minus j 2 pi by n r n good so this is um, uh, multiplying both sides and after multiplying i'm going to simplify the right hand side so the same steps the procedures the same steps and procedure that we had uh, implied on uh, what the inverse fourier transform so uh, now i can what i'm going to do is i have two summations i have one summation to the base k and another summation to the base um, n on the right hand side so i'm going to group 
these two summations. So I'm going to take sigma n summation to one side and I'm going to keep what all is possible with sigma k to one side and let us see what do I get. So I'm keeping this and for sigma n, so I am uh, going to bring the exponential, both the exponential to my sigma n base. So it becomes e to the power of j 2 pi by n k minus r n. So now this k minus r into n. So this is interesting because I know that whenever, because if I am talking about periodic signal, my k minus r can only be multiples of n. So the k minus r can only be multiples of n if you are talking about a periodic signal. So periodic signal we are dealing with n, 2n, 3n, 4n, 5n because that is how your periodic signal it repeats itself only after n. So my k minus r will always be equal to n if my if we are talking about periodic signal. So the discrete Fourier transform formula is exclusively applied. You know, it, it is like formulated from a periodicity signal, from after the periodicity of the signal. But it can also be the same. You know, we just have to assume that what applies to a periodic signal also applies to a non-periodic signal and then use the formula on a non-periodic signal. But it is derived after a periodic signal. So now, after this is equal to one, so what happens is my, whenever my k minus r is a multiple of n, that's what I've written there, uh, the exponential becomes just 1 because it's just now e to the power of j 2 pi into multiple of n. So a, e to the power of j into 2 pi uh, multiple of n means integers. So any integer power of uh, 2 pi uh, in exponential is 1. So e to the power of j 2 pi is 1, e to the power of j 4 pi is 1, e to the power of j 6 pi is 1, e to the power of j so on. So as long as it's a multiple of 2 pi, it is equal to 1. So that is how I get my 1 and then now my equation simplifies to sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k into 1. Now, I am not going to write that sigma k with my x of k because it's understood that uh, the k is from 0 to n minus 1. So, I have simplified that first equation and I wrote the second equation to be x of k is equal to sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n e to the power of minus j to pi k n by n. Now, this is your discrete Fourier transform. All right. So this is your discrete Fourier transform and now I have a, I'll write the inverse Fourier transform also and now you see you compare these two so one is a, a negative exponential power and another one is a positive exponential power right and x of n and x of k interchange but that 1 by n that scaling of 1 by n is something uh, unique in the inverse discrete Fourier formula and that is a question many of them ask why that 1 by n is there and now you know if you know this proof you know why that 1 by n how we get that 1 by n and where we are losing that 1 by n when it comes to your uh, uh, discrete Fourier transform computation good because that 1 by n into n because it is a multiple of uh, e to the power of uh, j 2 pi and that sigma equal to n equal to 0 to n minus 1 so that is n so that becomes 1 into n into 1 Okay, so that is how, that is where I lose it, right? So that n gets lost uh, in computation of the discrete Fourier transform. So you can uh, know this. Next is our uh, DFT as a linear transformation. So I'm talking about uh, DFT as your linear transformation. So what uh, here we are planning to do is uh, we have the discrete formulas, right? We have the two formulas now and now we are trying to um, make this formula as a linear system of equations. So it is now it is a complex exponential equation. So when I put e to the power of minus j that becomes complex exponential. So we want that complex exponential to become a linear form and that is obtained. So when we call this DFT equation as a linear equation or a matrix equation when we substitute that uh, e to the power of minus j to pi by n k m to be w n. So Wn equal to e to the power of minus j to pi by n. Good. So that substitution converts my equation into a linear transformation form. And that substitution W is also called as twiddle factor or linear transformation multiple. Good. So this is also known as a DFT analysis equation. And the same thing if I apply for my inverse discrete Fourier transform, then it becomes a DFT synthesis equation good dft analysis and dft synthesis equation in both cases the substitution we are doing is e to the power of my e to the power of j 2 pi minus j 2 pi by n is equal to wn so in one case it becomes wn to the power of kn 
in other case it becomes w n to the power of minus k n and this is my dft synthesis equation so this is the proof this is the mathematical proof for your uh, dfts and idfts and how you represent your dft as a linear transformation matrix form using this substitution so that is uh, for today's class i'll see you uh, with more numericals and uh, more mathematical proof on dft thank you